Another costly and deadly day in this month's long catastrophe. Saturday's soaring temperatures and strong winds fanned hundreds of blazes across three states. Exhausted firefighters powerless to halt the destruction. The flames consumed hundreds of properties, leaving local communities shocked. These people next door lost their house. You know, people in the court, most of the houses in the court are gone. <laughs> All these houses here are gone. It's devastating. Battling the worst bushfires in living memory, Australian leaders admit they're in uncharted territory. We can't pretend that this is something we've experienced before. It's not. Uh, because the weather activity we're seeing, the extent and spread of the fires, the speed at which they're going, the way in which they're attacking communities who've never, ever seen fire before, um, is unprecedented. Satellite images show the scale of the fires along Australia's southeast coast. The severity of the crisis has prompted Prime Minister Scott Morrison to mobilise up to 3,000 military reservists to assist exhausted volunteer firefighters. Morrison has faced intense criticism for his response to the disaster. Putting our lives at risk. That's how much we enjoy it, mate, putting our lives at risk. I do it for my local community. I do it for the township of Nelligan and the people of Australia. That's what I do it for. I don't do it for you, Scott Morris, and I don't do it for any of you pricks in government, parliament, anything. Cooler conditions are expected to give some relief to firefighting efforts, but officials warn the reprieve won't be enough to get fires under control, let alone put them out. Joining us now from New South Wales is David Harper. He's a resident of the town of Naruma, which is circled by bushfires. How are you personally doing right now, I have to ask you to start, and, and is your home in danger? My home is potentially in danger, depending on whether the wind changes to the west or not, as well as many other on the coast in where I am, yeah. And how are you personally coping with this? Um, at this stage, it's like the calm before the storm. We're expecting it to hit on Saturday at 11 o'clock, and it's just sitting there brewing. Fortunately, as I said, we didn't get the westerly, so we're sort of OK at the moment. But I think Thursday, Friday this week is going to be like the trigger points. There's going to be two hot days and the likelihood of it coming through may may happen. So, so it's uh, on the edge of my, I suppose. So essentially, fingers crossed. Absolutely. Absolutely. With... with the measures we've gone through too, like laying wet towels on the on the uh, on the uh, below the curtains, removing all the curtains, all the furniture to the centre of the house. It's been it's been a full on effort for the last few days, and by not just me but the entire community. I can't imagine. Have you ever seen anything like this before, David? No, mate, not like this. I've I've lived a fair few places. I've dealt with a little bit of fire as a young fella, back burning and stuff up in Coffs Harbour, but. Nothing like this. And we, we're trapped. Essentially, a lot of people in the coast here. And I'm, I'm a lucky one, mate. I'm on the coast in a little township. The guys who are two, three k's back are in dense bush. So it, it's obviously very concerning for my community. No doubt you are not alone. You mentioned your community. From my vantage point, there are whole communities around the entire nation living on the edge with many people criticizing the government's response. How's your community coming together, David? The, the common problem is being faced by the whole lot of us. So I, I guess when I say community now, I mean um, we, we're actually communing. We're having uh, emergency town meetings uh, that all the tourists who have been down here because we're in the prime time of year for tourism have been asked to leave as a, because our, our resources are under so much uh, strain. Um, no fuel and, you know, we're lucky because we live in a small community so we generally know each other by face and when we all see each other in a large place all together with the same problem, we go, oh, you know, that guy, he needs fuel so I'll go and siphon some fuel out of a truck for him or, or, and it's the same both ways. David, we're just about out of time but very quickly, if you had a direct line to Australia's leaders, what would you tell them right now? Pull their heads out. They act like kids. They need to act like how they want the Australian people to act and be a good representation of us. David Harper from Naruma, thank you so much for your time and good luck.
Thank you very much, sir. Have a great day.